It's fascinating that uh, the Hebrew language, the Old Testament, has the word for trust. You remember that saving faith, the word to believe in the scriptures, has a few key nuances. Let me rehearse those quickly. Faith is always toward an object. In the Greek language, it's pistuo ace. You believe into something. You don't believe in believing. It's not just that you believe. You believe into an object worthy of your faith. And saving faith is always believing into Jesus Christ. There is, if you will, an element of notitia. I get the word notion from that. You need to know something. You need to know about the Lord Jesus Christ, who he is, what he's done, what he's provided, what he's taught. You need to know him if you're going to have saving faith. Secondly, you not only have notitia, you need to have a census. Theologians use the word a census. We get the word assent to that. A census means we accept this to be true. It's not just an idea that we're dealing with in our minds. We know these facts and we say these facts that are being offered, we accept as our reality. But even here, this is not saving faith. This is as far as the demons can go. The scriptures say they know who Jesus was. They said, we know you are the son of the living God. They had knowledge of him. And they didn't deny it. They said, that's who you are. What was lacking with their knowledge and their assent was their fiducia. We get the word fiduciary from that, which is their trusting dependence upon the one whom they know is true. They're relying upon him. And so what we must do now as we come to hear these truths is to say, is my knowledge coupled with faith? Faith and knowledge are not enemies in Scripture. We take the truth of who God is, what he's revealed in his word, what he knows about us. We say, I know it. I accept it as true. And now I'm going to trust in it, rest upon it. The word for faith in the Hebrew language really means to roll over on, just like on your Tempur-Pedic mattress at the end of the day, or whichever brand you happen to sleep on. You roll over and say, oh, that's what you need to do with this doctrine. Roll over and trust, depend, be persuaded of it, be confident, be sure about it. In fact, it's interesting, in the Hebrew language, the word for trust is batakti. We might spell it this way, B-E-T-A-K-T-I, batakti. This word is never found in any cognate language of the ancient Near East. It's found only in the Hebrew tongue. Why is that? Because the gods of the ancient nations around Israel are, were not gods you trusted. You might try to persuade them, to cajole them, to coerce them, or to fend yourself off from them. But you did not trust upon them because they were fickle and they could turn against you at a moment's notice. Ah, but how very different is the God of Israel, the God of Scripture, who revealed himself as the I am that I am. I am the unchanging one who ever lives in the present, whoever is who he is. You can depend upon me. Batakti. Uniquely given of the God of Israel. Interestingly, this word is never used in the Bible of any human being, except for the godly wife in Proverbs 31. In his heart, he safely trusts. What a high honor for our Christian women. But what we need to see here is this trust and dependence upon God means that we can understand as we look at other people and we might use the sign I once saw at a roadside stand. It said, in God we trust, all others pay cash. We depend on God. We don't depend on human knowledge. God is the one we rest upon.